Who knew back when the original Metroid was released that it would inspire so many games? The idea of exploring different parts of a game world based on unlocking abilities is a great system and has been incorporated into many different franchises, most famously Castlevania Sympathy of the Night. You know what else is popular though? Tamagotchi! I know what you're thinking, why hasn't somebody taken the gameplay and structure of Metroid and combined it with Tamagotchi? Well, luckily for the human race, somebody already has with the game Monster Tale for the Nintendo DS. It was made by Dream Rift, with the only other game to date being Epic Mickey Power of Illusion for the 3DS. So how was Dream Rift's first game? Did they manage to combine Metroid and Tamagotchi, or did they somehow turn this idea stupid? Let's have a look. The story is that a young girl called Ellie is walking up during the night by a loud noise. She finds a bracelet that teleports her to a world filled with mostly friendly monsters called the Monster Kingdom. She also finds an egg which hatches into a monster that she calls Chomp, so she decides to go on a quest to both find a way back home and to find the monster's mother. Throughout the game you find other kids who also got transported to the Monster Kingdom, but none of them want to go back home for their different reasons. The story has the same animal rights message to it that looms over the Pokemon series, but it's also about why the other kids have taken over this kingdom and why they want to stay. The story doesn't go that deep into this, but it does get the job done. I didn't get infested in what was going on due to the fact it was pretty obvious where it was all going, but I have no complaints with the story. The core gameplay is similar to Metroid and Mega Man. Eddie controls very similar to Mega Man with your main two attacks being your blaster and your melee. You have an ammo bar for your blaster which drains when you shoot, however to recharge your blaster you have to melee enemies or find blue orbs. It's a different way of doing things but it could have been better. It's very easy to run out of your blaster as it's your most effective way to kill enemies but your melee is far too weak and using melee charges your blaster far too slowly. It means you spend most of your time punching enemies, which isn't bad, but it would have been nice to use your blaster most of the time. Throughout the game you discover new abilities and power-ups that you need to progress. The upgrades are well done in this game as you need them to get through certain areas, but each one also adds to the combat. For example, you unlock a power-up that lets you shoot a more powerful shot after meleeing, which is needed to open certain doors, but you also need to use it against certain bull enemies because they protect themselves. The control and power-ups are great, but sometimes it can be distracting just how unoriginal they can be, such as the dash move from Mega Man X being in this game and the charge buster. There are enough original ideas in this game to make it worth playing, but things like the way you collect your power-ups are just too similar to other games. The most unique feature about the gameplay is the monster chomp himself. At any time you can press the X button to make chomp change from what screen is on. When he's on the top screen you can use his different attacks to take out enemies and use him to solve puzzles. However, when he gets hit or uses an attack, his bar decreases which can only be recharged by sending him to the bottom screen. While on the bottom screen he can attack enemies who appear there, as well as use as any monster items you discover. Chomp can level up, increasing his stats by gaining experience by either using monster items or defeating enemies directly. It's a great system as leveling up Chomp is deep enough to be interesting but not so complex that it interrupts the flow of the gameplay. It's fun using Chomp due to how simple it is as a lot of the time you'll just leave him on the bottom screen so as you're going through areas Chomp will be leveling up by using the monster items that you send to him but whenever you need to use him or want to use his attacks to help you out you can make him appear simply by pressing X. While you technically don't get other monsters to use, Chomp can take many different forms, each with their own level and stats. Each form has an element alignment which is either fire, earth or water. It's like Pokemon where fire is good against earth, earth is good against water and water is good against fire. The fire earth water system could have been incorporated better into the game. Ellie doesn't use element attacks, only Chomp does, and each form of Chomp, no matter what alignment it has, can use the same element attacks. I think the developers wanted the player to switch between the different Chomp forms to best suit what enemies you're up against, but it's almost completely pointless doing so. It doesn't take anything away from the game, as it just means you'll use the strongest Chomp you have and level that form up, but the element system could have been something interesting, rather than just a weak take on the Pokemon types. The levels are structured like the Metroid games. The game world is split into different sections which you must explore, but you unlock access to other areas in a non-linear fashion. 
For example, you might come across a door that you can't open, but later on in the game you unlock the necessary upgrade to open that door so you can return to it and open it later. Despite Monster Tail's structure faithfully replicating the Metroid game's level design, there are two problems with it here. The first is the map screen. The game will always tell you where to go on the map, but to access the map you have to pause the game. At the start it's okay, but once you have gained access to most of the areas, you have to constantly pause the game to check the map to make sure you're on the right path. It doesn't kill the gameplay, but it's odd that there's no map on the bottom screen, or maybe a mini map on the top screen. It's also odd because despite the non-linear design of the game, you are always told where to go. There is no reason to fully explore areas as there are no extra power-ups or secrets. Now it is nice not having to worry about missing anything when playing, but it does seem like a missed opportunity for replay value. The second reason the game's structure isn't as solid as Metroid's is the backtracking. Backtracking is the core to any game designed like this, but it gets a little ridiculous here. I don't mind backtracking in games, but after an hour of playing, you pretty much spend 70% of your time going through areas you've already been in, and 30% of your time exploring new places. One thing that does make the backtracking better than in Metroid though is Chomp itself. Enemies will drop monster items randomly, so no matter what you're doing, you can level up Chomp. On top of this, enemies will also drop money, which could be used to buy health upgrades, buster upgrades, and new melee attacks for any. The upgrades become very expensive, so you need all the money you can find. It means that while I feel like they should have toned the backtracking down a bit, it never becomes too tedious as you're always saving up for a new upgrade, or making Chomp even stronger. The saving could have been better in Monster Tail though. There are save points throughout the game and whenever you die you return to the last time you saved. When the game starts to get more difficult later on though, the saving can seem very harsh. The game literally loads up your save file, which means that any money you found or experience you earned gets erased. I would have preferred it if there was some sort of checkpoint system, or if they just let you keep your money and experience so you don't have to repeat level ups all the time. The graphics are pretty good, they're a bit childish, but they're nice to look at. The music is also good, although sometimes it can feel a bit out of place. Each boss in the game are the kids you encounter and their monsters. The bosses in terms of challenge are a nice mix of old school and current gaming. You do have to figure out their attack patterns, but none of them will drive you crazy, so they're all fun to play. Monster Tail is a great game to play. I complained quite a bit in this review, but really the controls are tight, there is a lot of charm, and the combination of Metroid gameplay with the virtual pet management works really well. The main problem with it though is that although it does do a lot of things in its own way, it takes far too much from other games. That doesn't ruin the gameplay at all, and I really enjoy playing Monster Tail, but it does stop it from being a classic. A quick note is that the game is only available in America, so anyone in Europe or Japan unfortunately can't pick it up. Despite that fact though, my score is 8.0 out of 10. While it's not perfect, Monster Tail is a really solid DS game that is worth playing thanks to its premise.